You're so quiet. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Even as we get ready to hear the word. In the name of Jesus. As a sign of surrender, don't get tired of lifting your hands before the Lord. He's your maker. He's your creator. He loves you. He cares for you. He's the one that brought you this morning. He's the one that gave you this day. Just thank him for today. Thank him that he has given you the opportunity to be in his presence this morning in the name of Jesus. And tell the Lord, today I want to know and understand your purpose in my life in the name of Jesus. I don't want today to end before I know and understand my purpose in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know that you have a greater purpose in my life than I have imagined or even understood in the past. And I pray in the name of Jesus. May you let everyone here this morning in the name of Jesus know and understand the purpose that you have over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that my Father, that your power, your presence be found in this place in a special way in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord of Lords and King of all kings, because my Father and my God, you are here with us this morning. You are here with us this morning. My Father and my God, I pray for your touch in the name of Jesus. Upon each and every one of us, as we are gathered here, we believe that, my Father, that we are not going to leave this place the same way we came, because your power is here with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and also believe. Amen and amen. Celebrate Jesus. Sir. In the name of Jesus, sir. glory to Jesus. Amen, amen. Just before we hear the word of God, I wish to welcome all of you in the house of the Lord. As I also invite the children so that we may release them to their class. In the presence of the Lord, all the children that are present here, you can usher them together with their teachers. So that uh, I believe uh, uh, Elder Nancy will bless them. Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, oh Jesus. We are here, we are here for you. Thank you. 
Amen. The Lord bless you, our children, and Elder Nancy, in the presence of the Lord. I, I want us to read the scriptures, and as we do so, I invite you to come closer. I, I, I know you know I'm going to say that. Um, I always say, after standing before people so many days, people know and understand you. Even before you say something, they know what you are going to say. You know I'm going to say that, so kindly uh, take a seat uh, in front of you, or even better, closer. And uh, I don't know why we don't love coming closer in the presence of the Lord. We, we fear, eh? we, we stay too far. Um, I, I want this central role to come closer. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. God bless you. God, God bless you. Yeah, yes, come closer, come closer. <laughs> Amen. I, I thank God for those that are taking giant steps, eh? while others are taking uh, very small steps. Uh. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, I'm referring from the book of uh, First Samuel, chapter number 18, verse six uh, um, up to nine. First Samuel, chapter number 18, verse six up to nine. Some of these verses I read last week. And it came to pass, as they came, uh, when David uh, was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tablets, with joy, and with the instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and uh, said, Saul has slain thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and uh, the saying displeased him, and uh, he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and unto me they have ascribed but uh, thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Amen. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. I said, may the Lord bless his word. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you are at the right place. Tell them, your coming is not in vain. And my prayer for you this morning is that the Lord will excite you with the miracle that you've been waiting for. In Jesus name tell them have faith and the Lord is going to do it in Jesus name amen can we celebrate Jesus amen amen we can celebrate our praise and worship equally as we take our seats in the presence of the Lord Uh, I know some of you have followed this and uh, some of you may not have followed. I started uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've been covering about the man after God, the man after God, and uh, David is the, our character. We've been looking at uh, how he was anointed, how he interacted with the people, how he was loved, and uh, today we are going to look at uh, how he was also hated. Last week uh, we, we, we looked at uh, uh, the ups. I had uh, said we, we are going to be focusing on the ups and downs of uh, King David. And I covered the ups and I didn't cover the downs. And today we are going to be covering the downs as uh, we see David the fugitive. David the fugitive. It is good to look at all these aspects of his life because uh, this, this, this man that God chose after Saul is important and he is key. And I told you that uh, David is a... Uh, an icon in Israel and uh, that cannot be forgotten or ignored in any generation 
whatsoever. Whatever God wanted to accomplish through his life was so big, bigger than himself. And uh, after being loved and being cheered and uh, being uh, applauded by so many, you realize uh, that attracted uh, envy in his life. Because uh, we are told that uh, this man called Saul, he is a confused man. He is a confused man because at one point, he loves this man so much. If you read chapter number 16, uh, where he was brought before him, and he asked uh, him, who are you? And he said, uh, I am the son of Jesse. And uh, he loved him until he sent uh, to his father and said, uh, I, I, I want him to remain here. I want him to remain here. Last week we saw that uh, so many things changed about David's life uh, and God was making him over, all over again. He was giving him a facelift uh, kind of uh, transforming him and preparing him for greater things that were coming upon his life. And I told you that uh, it was not uh, by mistake or by accident that David is testing the good things of life, then later on he's going to miss them. It is not by coincidence uh, or accident for that matter. God wanted him to have an exposure, an experience of what he's going to be having in the future. And many times, this is what we do not understand. Any opportunity I told you that you get, do not take it for granted. Wherever you go, whatever chances that God gives you, whatever maybe companies that you have worked for, whatever people you have interacted with, God is giving you the exposure and a taste of what may be, may be coming your way in the future. Because not all of us, huh? not all of us are destined to become uh, uh, the leaders of this nation. Uh, because uh, many times we, we, we narrow it down to that. That's why uh, even as we head to the elections, you realize there is a lot of tension uh, and a lot of uh, pull and push here and there because everyone wants to be in a position of power and therefore you realize we have narrowed it down to that and anyone that is not a politician is not important in this nation however I beg to disagree because uh, God has raised men and women of great value in the universe more than the leaders that have led this nation so it is not proper for us to imagine that you do not if you do not become a politician then you never achieve that greatness if you do not become a king like David you never achieve that greatness if you do not become some Someone that will be known and mentioned uh, and uh, an icon maybe of the universe or, or this nation you 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 regret and stay there and belittle yourself and imagine you are nothing and nobody no 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 that, that's not the case God can raise you in whatever level and make you someone that will make an impact for generations to come because uh, leaders that are elected they are seasonal that's why they have a cycle of five years uh, you can imagine there are people that were just elected for one election cycle of five years uh, and never to be elected again. Uh, and they've been trying and trying and trying and they have never been uh, elected again. I told you of a man, two men that I met uh, and one gave his testimony. Where I, uh, I attended the, the burial of my uncle, one of my uh, uncles, a uh, brother to my mother. And there is a politician who arrived there and me, I even didn't know him because uh, he was saying the days he was elected myself, I could didn't tell her and, 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 he, and he was telling us uh, because he was given an opportunity that barely even his arrival there is unnoticeable nobody is recognizing that he is there because uh, he has become so irrelevant uh, over the years because now he's no longer a politician he's no longer host a uh, position of power and he was saying that I had so many friends uh, and so many people are close to me and they endeared themselves to me but as soon as uh, I failed or I did not win the next election they started dropping one by one and uh, when they realized I was becoming broke they all in fact uh, he was saying that he has another bunch of friends that he has had to seek instead of the other way around because when he was in that position many of his friends were looking for him they were seeking for him in fact they were endearing themselves to him some were coming with gifts uh, to be able to uh, buy his favor and all that but when he did not get that position he became so irrelevant so irrelevant uh, i met another one i told you i went uh, at uh, 
uh, uh, these uh, electricity house, uh, and uh, um, I, 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 I entered those uh, the lifts, and uh, there was a man that I knew. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name. Uh, there was a politician uh, many years ago. And uh, I realized uh, this is the man. We were standing, you know, the way you stand in a lift, some of you are facing each other, and he's taller than me. And I was looking at him and I realized this is the man. But nobody was paying attention, nobody was even greeting him, nobody was even, uh, you know, bothering because he is now an, an entity. He has been forgotten, he becomes uh, obsolete because uh, those positions of power are seasonal. But God desires to do something in your life that can have an impact of generations to come. Generations to come. Now, I've been talking uh, in the midweek service for those of you that come and follow. Um, uh, and, uh, 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 and we've been looking at these character, characters of uh, the book of Ruth. Uh, and uh, we looked at uh, Ruth, uh, uh, Naomi, and we looked at... Uh, uh, Opa and uh, Ruth, Ruth, because uh, maybe uh, perhaps this Wednesday I'm going to be uh, uh, finishing that series. You realize that she may have been coming from a caste society, a caste people. She is a Moabites, but you realize that the impact that Ruth made is so big for generations and generations to come her name is still being mentioned because she, she her, her impact was so big yet she did not hold any position of power she did not hold any position whatsoever so many of us it is deceiving to imagine that we must hold a position of power tell your neighbor be content tell them be content with the path that god has chosen for you because it is God that chooses our paths your path is not my path equally my path is not your path it is not anybody else's and therefore you realize all of us have been called and chosen by God to take a different kind of path and David you realize now being the king in waiting all this uh, pomp and color that surrounded him because we find when he killed Goliath now he started crossing the line he started stepping into the territories that were very dangerous remember he was not a soldier he was not a soldier whatsoever he was just an ordinary young man who was sent to fetch food uh, and to his brothers there are three brothers because uh, they were born eight of them uh, and three were in this military of Saul. they have been there for 40 days he's been sent uh, to uh, take the, uh, food to them and know their whereabouts and report to the father now when he arrives there he saves the day he becomes a hero he is celebrated and I thank God because uh, this man changed a situation that was not meant and designed for him many times uh, we have believed uh, that uh, we, we, we need to be experts uh, we need to be known in certain areas of life and we need to be established in those areas so as to be acceptable or to uh, provide a solution in a particular area but that is not the case for David he was not a soldier he could even not be able to carry weapons of soul when he was given but he saved the situation and he became a hero and the Israelites are praising him and the Philistines are wondering who is this and the women are praising him and so realized that this boy is quickly taking over he is shining and outshining me he is quickly becoming somebody I brought him from the bushes I brought him to the palace I made him my armor bearer he has been upon th a thousand or he had been uh, uh, made a leader of a thousand soldiers uh, and slowly the people are beginning to acknowledge him recognize him praise him more than the king and the king asked himself because he became a threat he became a threat he asked himself uh, what more can this young man have than the kingdom this is what he's asking there in the latter part and what can he have more but the kingdom he has half the praises he has a name he maybe is going to have resources because uh, you realize that uh, I said uh, sometimes back uh, when dealing with envy that uh, there are three things 
things that are really um, um, uh, make people envious and that is uh, number one power number two money number three fame and those three things are following David if you observe carefully this guy is slowly becoming very popular and as such money is going to follow resources are going to be uh, to, to follow he is getting nearer to power and therefore he's going to become powerful and the king is becoming jealous and that is one thing to note because jealousy does not care who you are however he is a young boy but he is a threat to the king and you remember in the days of Jesus there is this scenario whereby Herod had through the wise men they passed by his uh, palace and asked him uh, where is the king of the Jews uh, born and uh, he asked is there a king that is born he said I'm not aware he asked around and uh, his people told him uh, we heard that he was going to be born uh, in Bethlehem Judah and he sent them there and he told them as you get the news uh, come by and tell me so that I may go and honor him and gift him equally but he wanted to kill the boy and Herod uh, did not rest he wanted to kill him uh, he made so much effort until uh, he reached and he killed all the boys that were two years and under because his kingdom had been threatened his power has been threatened and you realize that uh, this threat is very alive even in our nation and I was telling you last week uh, that whatever is happening uh, when someone begin uh, to outshine the boss uh, and what else can he have than the kingdom that is the question hate him like him do whatever to him but that man has become a threat and everybody is imagining everybody that was feeling that they are closer to power and grabbing power and becoming president they are asking this man has been praised in every part of this nation this man is doing this he's meeting this the young and the older and he's having slogans that are you know associating with people and what they are asking is like Saul was asking what more can he have than the kingdom and the mission to stop him uh, from becoming the king uh, began there and then out of envy because uh, envy is uh, what triggered uh, this enmity because previously you realize that Saul loved David because he had favor before him when he arrived he realized this is a handsome young man he is playing well he is killed in a way and he is you know sort of like uh, 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 pacifying my demons or whatever it is that was troubling him and he realized that, that this is a young man that i need to love he loved him until he made him a, a, a permanent residence of the palace however now because of the threat of the kingdom of his popularity of his resources and of his power now he begins uh, to chase him and therefore you realize that one day when they are there and uh, um, uh, because his eyes if you read the following verse there um, you realize that the eyes of Saul were upon David from that day from that day he kept an eye on him he never let him go escape his eye and one time um, the king has half his or had his episodes and uh, David was invited because whenever these episodes uh, arose uh, David was invited to play the harp for him David is there playing he is seated uh, near the wall and uh, he picks his javelin there was a javelin in his in his hand he picks it uh, and he aims at David uh, to pin him uh, to the wall but thank God by the grace of God we are told in verse 11 uh, that he missed uh, he missed uh, this is what the Bible says and so cast his uh, the javelin for he said I will smite David even to the wall with it and David avoided uh, out of his presence uh, twice uh, not only did he avoid it then uh, he avoided it uh, even later he avoided it even later because three times uh, did uh, King Saul uh, try to kill him in this way but by the grace of God uh, he escaped that because it was jealousy and envy that was uh, overwhelming this man uh, 
called uh, King Saul. He had the power, he had everything. David has touched nothing yet. In fact, David has not declared he wants anything or he needs anything uh, from Israel. However, the king is threatened and he attempts uh, to kill him. And from that day forward, that kind of a war began because uh, he was afraid of him. He was afraid of him. Indeed, if you read verse 12 there, you realize that uh, King Saul was afraid of David. And it is supposed to be the other way. David is supposed to be afraid of King Saul because you are afraid of the powerful and the mighty. The ones that have the resources, the ones that can do just anything to finish you. But you must understand that your enemies are afraid of you. You may not have anything, you may not have the resources, you may not have the connections, you may not have nothing. But the enemy is afraid of you. Because, and Saul was afraid of David. Because what? Because the Lord was with him. Because the Lord was with him. The reason as to why your enemies may fear you, it is not because of you. It is because the Lord is with you. When they realize uh, you are not alone, when they realize uh, there is a backup, everything you try to do may become successful, however small it looks, uh, it becomes successful. And therefore you realize uh, that the enemy becomes afraid of you. And there is nothing as dangerous as a man that is afraid. They say that a wounded animal is very dangerous. Equally, a man that is afraid is very dangerous. So he wasn't after David because David was afraid of him. In fact, David was not running because he was afraid of Saul. It was Saul that was afraid of David and as such, he was after him. So when you see an enemy pursuing you, do not imagine that the enemy is pursuing you because you are afraid of him. No. Sometimes it is the other way around. They are pursuing you because they are afraid of you. Why? Because they realize there is another force that is behind you. There is something, uh, there is someone more powerful, more greater that is behind you. And when they realize that, uh, you become a threat to everyone and uh, the powers that be the powers that be and from there on david is a fugitive i told you he had his good moments uh, he was enjoying the meals of the palace i told you he was a man from the bush straight to the palace he's playing for the king uh, he's having access uh, to rooms and places that are, uh, are not accessible to everyone he is having privileges uh, he is having the meals uh, fed uh, by the king and the prince uh, he is given such a you know a dress code as the prince uh, because we learned that when jonathan gave him uh, an outfit he did not just buy for him or purchase for him or make outfits for him he gave him his clothes and he gave him uh, his robe, uh, he gave him his uh, clothing, uh, he gave him his uh, sword uh, and his bow and his belt uh, just to give him a facelift to change him. But he did not understand that he was making him the heir apparent because uh, such dress code was worn by the prince. Uh, and the prince is the heir apparent because it was a monarchy kind of an arrangement whereby when uh, the king dies, uh, it is the son uh, that takes over. Someone from the family is going to take over if they do not have a son. And therefore, when Jonathan was dressing this man, he made a mistake because he did not realize what he was doing. But by default, that, was, that is what he was doing. Uh, giving him his robe and his dressing and his bow and his sword and his uh, uh, belt and all that. He was making him the heir apparent. And David was enjoying all those privileges in the palace. He was being hailed and praised and loved by everyone. But suddenly life has changed. And he is running helter skelter to secure his life. However, he was trying so hard not to kill the king. Because uh, David is not afraid. I told you, 
David is not, is not afraid. You will learn a number of times uh, that it was Saul that was afraid of David. And therefore, as he is running, he is not afraid. The only thing he is avoiding is to kill the king. You already know that story where he was working so hard trying to restrain himself from killing the king even when he had the opportunities to do so. And there is a mix up in the family because already at this point he has become the son-in-law of the king. And as such, he has married one of the daughters of the king. And being a son-in-law, his father-in-law now is pursuing him. He is loved by the son and the daughter of this king that is pursuing him. They are trying to save him. One time Jonathan is trying to save him. Michal is equally trying to save him. Because if you go to chapter number 19, uh, this daughter of the king uh, was trying to save him. Because uh, he wanted to kill him there and uh, 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 while he was in bed. Uh, and uh, he, he let him out of the window and uh, he escaped uh, and kept uh, um, uh, a toy or a, uh, it's called a what? These uh, they are called what? Hmm? These children, things, and uh, all that that look like human beings. They are called what? Yeah? Dolls, eh? All right. Yeah. She keeps one in the bed and covers it. And they are thinking it's David. And when they come, the soldiers, she tells them, the, the, the man is sick. He is sick. He is in bed. And they go back to the king. And the king says, no, no, no. Go. Tell her to show you where he is lying or where he is sleeping so that they, you can kill him there. When they go, they realize there's a doll sleeping there. And Saul is very angry. Saul is very angry because he had married off this, his daughter, so as to trap him. So as to trap him. Because if you read verse 17 of this chapter 18, uh, he began to set him up so that he can be able to kill him. And uh, this, uh, 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 his daughter, if you go back uh, to Moreba, the other daughter that was called uh, Moreba, uh, uh, there before, you realize that uh, he said, uh, "For I don't have to kill him. I just need to set him up uh, so that the hands uh, of the Philistines uh, can kill him. And, and, and uh, now this is the second daughter because Moreb was married by another person. Now this is the second daughter. I told you, you may pronounce it anyhow because uh, I'm avoiding to call her Michael or Miko because uh, that's a male name in Kenya. However, elsewhere there are names like those. But uh, I choose to call her Mikol uh, for uh, uh, differentiation. And uh, she, 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 she was given to this so that he may become a target of the enemy. It was not out of goodwill. Saul did not intend to make uh, David uh, his son-in-law. But he was setting him up so that the enemy tries anything and everything to make sure that whatever even good acts they are, you know, demonstrating over your lives, they have some hidden agenda in them. They have some poison in them. Anything they do, anything they attempt to do, however, praiseworthy it looks. And uh, Saul wanted to kill him all through. Through himself, through his daughters, through the Philistines, uh, and all that. However, this war was interesting because I told you, there is, uh, David has endeared himself to everyone. The servants of this uh, king, they love him. The soldiers love him. Uh, the daughter loves him. Uh, the son loves him. Everyone loves him. And they are trying to secure him. While well, the father is working so hard to make him uh, perish uh, because he is a threat uh, and, uh, to the kingdom. And now you realize that uh, God allowed him to go through this because I believe this is the doing of God. Many times uh, when we are doing so well in our lives, when we are succeeding, 
when we are having it so good, our businesses are working so well, when everything about our lives, every attempt we make is successful. And I say that at some point, uh, when you want to realize that you have favor upon your life, uh, it is when you do every first attempt, uh, yield result or is successful. Because uh, not many times, first attempt yields results or is fruitful. Many times, first and second and third and fourth attempt will result to failure. But whenever you have every first attempt, you attempt something for the first time and you are very successful. You attempt something else the first time and you are successful. You make an application here, you get the job. You make a, you know, a, 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 an application there, you get it. Sometimes I've had people even here coming to see me and telling me, I made applications and I've been invited to a number of jobs. I'm confused which one to go to. And all of them want me, they are inviting me. First attempt, just first attempt. You start a business, it succeeds. You try to do a project, the project succeeds. You must realize that the eye of the Lord is upon you and favor is upon you and everything is working so well for you. But however, there is no guarantee that things are going to remain that way forever. Because sometimes uh, without God, whenever things start changing uh, negatively, we start suffering, we start losing, uh, we start mourning, uh, we start complaining, we start having all these manner of things until we ask, is there God in heaven? Sometimes we have questioned uh, and asked, uh, is there God? that he has the prayer of his people. Is there a God that lives? Is there a God that performs miracles? Sometimes we have said, no, there is no God because of what we are going through. Yet we easily and quickly forget how we were enjoying life in the past. That was not the optimum. However, you must remember that. That was not, you know, the, 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 the ultimate goal that God had set for you. It was not an end in itself. It was just a means. God had kept you there to have an experience with your future, with better things, and to start imagining and picturing things differently. Because you realize, ultimately, exposure is everything. Exposure is everything. Someone that is not exposed, uh, you realize even when you have a conversation with them, uh, it will be, you know, at that lowest level. They will be reasoning uh, in terms of events and items. Uh, instead of uh, planning and asking if they are given an opportunity for something that can be able to help them uh, for a long time, uh, they will ask items. They will ask for events. <laughs> They will ask for something. And you realize, I had a story, maybe you might have heard it, because of uh, the way people desire to have power and to be you know, connected with people in power. And one time, uh, uh, um, this story is told uh, that there, there was a very powerful king. And this very powerful king, he realized that he was going to die soon and uh, leave the throne maybe to another king who would uh, definitely would be his son. But he had a servant who had served him for a very long time. A very long time. And he asked this servant, what is it that I can do for you? Because I feel like uh, my days are coming to an end. What is it that I can do for you as a reward? You have been of good service unto me and my family. And this man was just thinking about power. Why? Because he had been exposed. He was there. He was interacting with the high and the mighty. And realizing that he cannot have the throne because the son must take uh, you know, the throne after the father. He said, I want one thing. As you give, uh, you know, your last speech, whatever speech that you're going to give, uh, as you gather everyone, make sure you invite me three times, three times on the dais, whisper to me something. Three times, invite me the first time, let me go sit down, invite me the second time, and the third time. And the king was asking, what do I tell you, even if you tell me nothing? Just whisper to me. 
Even if you tell me some nonsense, tell me I look good. <laughs> or what you want to eat for dinner. Tell me just something. But people are not hearing what you are telling me. Just whisper to me. And what did he intend with all that? Because everyone was confused. Because word went around that this man has been given the privilege to ask for something from the king. And he is asking just whispers. Just to be whispered to three times in the dias when the king is making his last speech and everybody was considering him foolish but no this man had the understanding of the system he knew how things work he knew that by this man whispering to me that shows that i'm so important to him and anyone else that will be coming after him will recognize without a doubt that I was someone that was trusted and of relevance unto him. Because perhaps you don't know what he was whispering to or what he was saying. And everybody didn't know. And the king said that nonsense because he didn't have anything to tell him. He invited him three times. And that remained as a mark. He was never forgotten. He was always getting elevated and promoted. But however, for someone else, they would have asked for an item. They would have asked for some gold and silver. They would have asked for some piece of land. They would have asked for something else who, which would easily you know, reduce in value soon after the death or even before the death of the king. But this man realized, if I make myself relevant and very important to the king anyone else coming will realize that i'm a very reliable source how comes that the king invited this man three times on the dais the same day without inviting anyone else and without whispering to anyone else and without letting us know what he is communicating to this man and therefore, you must realize that exposure is everything. If this man was not exposed, then he would have asked for something, you know, insignificant in his life. In his life. And uh, this I've said many times. I've said many times. Uh, some people, during even this political season, they are used. Used to so much by the politicians, you so much. And uh, after those people get into power, you realize that person goes back to their normal ordinary life that was very insignificant in the first place. In fact, they were doing all that because they had nothing to do. They don't have a job, they don't have a business, they don't have anything. So that by just following this man and doing mobilization and doing this and that and shouting for him and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, driving the euphoria and all that. And uh, uh, he's given a hundred bob, he's given something, sometimes he's given more. And uh, he's, he just looks like he's so close and people want to associate with him because they realize if he's close to this uh, politician, then uh, he must be having access. But later on you find them, after the elections, they are just around, their lives remain the same. Nothing changed about them. Tell your neighbor, do not accept to be used. <laughs> Tell them, get something. Yeah, make sure you get something. <laughs> As opposed to be left that way. David was being exposed. And I believe, I believe, and I told you that he is imagining, even when uh, he's beginning to become a fugitive and restless and running from place to place, he is imagining, I'll be back. And when I'm back to that place, I will not be a servant. I will not be under anyone. I will be the king. I will be the one calling the shots. I will be the man on the throne. Because he had that exposure. He had that exposure. Now, let me tell you something that is important uh, for you when you have so many enemies. Because uh, many of us, when we have so many enemies, we do not know what to do. We fight the enemy. We rise against the enemy. 
you know, we, we try to, you know, become sophisticated in terms of weapons and all that, and to become clever and all that. Uh, and it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because uh, the, the, there is a guy there who needs assistance. Eh? Your mother is not here yet. I, I know him. Well, I don't know, just relax. <laughs> He's looking for the mother. Your mother is not here yet. She will be here in the next service. Eh? <laughs> now, you, you, realize, you realize that uh, it is important for you to understand what do I do when I have so many enemies? What do I do? What do I do? One of the most important things is to have a covering. Tell your neighbor, you must have a covering. Tell them loudly, you must have a covering. Because you need God and you need a covering of the man of God. This is what the Bible says in chapter number 19. In chapter number 19, if we begin from verse 20 there, um, uh, this is what the Bible says. Chapter number 19, eh? Uh -huh. And so, can you go back just a little uh, to 19 or 18 there? Uh, David fled and escaped and came to Samuel uh, to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And uh, he and Samuel went down and uh, or went and dwelt in Nioth or at Nioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Nioth in Ramah. Uh, and Saul sent messengers to take David. And uh, when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing and uh, pointed uh, over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied. And what happened? And when it was told uh, Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent uh, messengers again at that time, and they prophesied also. Now, this, this, this event happened, uh, you know, when David now realized, because uh, what had happened is that uh, when Saul attempted to kill him with a javelin, somehow there was a handshake, eh? Some, some way of a ceasefire and truce and all that. Because Jonathan intervened. Because David told Jonathan that uh, your father wants to kill me and all that. And, uh, and uh, he had instructed his servants to kill him. And uh, Jonathan went and told him, no, 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 no. Uh, this man has done nothing. Don't worry about him. Don't kill him. Don't bother him. He's not a threat. And his father said, okay. He said, okay. And there was ceasefire for a moment. But later on, his father was just saying that to satisfy or to gratify his son, but he did not mean it. He rises against David behind the back of uh, 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 Jonathan. And therefore, when now he wants to kill him at that time, he wants to uh, uh, spear him against the wall, and uh, he sent for servants to kill him while he is sleeping. Now he flees. Where does he go? Where does he go? The first place that he goes, he realizes that if the son of the king cannot help me, if my craftiness and my swiftness of evading those javelins cannot be able to save me, then I need a covering. The man that anointed me have more answers for me. He went to the man of God, Samuel. Because it was Samuel that had anointed this man. It was Samuel that was sent by God. And as such, David did not call himself. David did not anoint himself. Neither did David endear himself to anyone. It was Samuel that went to the house of Jesse and said, I am here to anoint one of your sons. And that was David. He was anointed. You remember the story. And uh, he realized that I need a covering from the same man that anointed me. He had my word then. I believe he has my word now. 
Let me tell you something. Many of us ignore this factor because we realize and we tell ourselves that uh, the man of God is going through the same things I am going through. The man of God is no better. In fact, my challenges at, uh, uh, at another level, he cannot be able to in, uh, you know, relate with them. He cannot be able even to understand. He cannot be able to resolve them. You realize when David met Samuel, Samuel was not there to resolve the issues of David. In fact, uh, Samuel anointed David so that David can become greater than him. What? you don't understand in terms of uh, the eyes of the public in Israel they would have considered David higher because uh, he is the king however they are all serving God this one as a servant of God speaking to God uh, on behalf of men and this one speaking on behalf of the people because David was supposed uh, to become a king and it, was, it would have been foolish for him to imagine now that I've been anointed to become the king and I'm just waiting Waiting for Saul to die and all that, and I will be king. I need no help from a man that is at a lower level, from a man that has never been king, from a man that does not understand how these things work. He would have chosen that path, but it would have been disastrous for him. But he chose to go to this covering. And when he went to this covering, he realized that this covering is working. The power of God is with Samuel. Samuel is declaring things and they are happening because he was the leader of the school of prophets and the, the, the servants, the messengers of uh, Saul, they arrive there. When they arrive, they find uh, the school of prophecy prophesying. I believe they were having tutorials uh, on prophesying. And the spirit of the Lord, that's what we are told, came upon these servants and these messengers of Saul and they began to prophesy and you must understand that this prophecy was not divine prophecy it was a crazy kind of a thing it was a fanatical kind of a you know uh, uh, prophesying um, uh, one of my friends uh, my uh, childhood friends uh, in our neighborhood here some of you may know um, uh, uh, the, 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 the mother was going to some uh, funny funny church and um, let me call it just funny funny and they were having these funny funny episodes and all that and, and, and the mother got overwhelmed and for a week they invited me for a week the mother was there she was just speaking things uh, that they imagined was speaking in tongues for one week she was not feeding she was not doing anything she was not in prayer but she was having these episodes and at night she would walk out and start running out and they would run after her and uh, bring her back, try to pull her down and all that. And that thing wouldn't stop. And when I was invited, I was not invited to pray. No, 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 no. I was being invited as a friend so that we may take her to the hospital. And uh, I, I realized that this is not a hospital matter. This is not a hospital matter because there is nothing a doctor could do about that. Those episodes, there is nothing a doctor could do about it. And indeed, by the way, when they went, when they went, there is nothing the doctor did. In fact, the doctor said, this person has no problem. They are not sick. Just feed, feed her because she had not eaten for a week. And she was speaking throughout. And it was this, you know, I believe uh, evil spirit that was upon her. And she could not restrain herself from continuous utterances and chanting and all that. And people in the neighborhood are confused and all that. And the children are confused and everyone doesn't know what to do. And you realize because she had been overwhelmed by this evil spirit. But when the, those people of that place came wherever she had gotten that spirit uh, they were even worsening the scenario and all that things were getting worse until the family decided we are not going to try that again let's try a different method and when I went I told them something huh? I was I, I was not even a preacher I was not even a pastor I didn't even have a car myself uh, we were just going I was just going to accompany them and uh, something happened uh, something happened uh, because they just live in the neighborhood something happened uh, because uh, when I was there, I said, I told this, uh, uh, my childhood friend, I told him, this is not a hospital matter. However, you, because there are people here who have decided and they have called a, a, a vehicle to take her to the hospital, do that. But let's pray. Let's just pray first. 
And when she went to the hospital, there was nothing. They were told to take her back home. And in fact, even the doctor told them, seek some spiritual help. Because spiritual problems are resolved spiritually and by spiritual authorities. If you try to resolve a spiritual problem physically, you are going to fail. So that when these people arrived, they found the tutorials happening of the school of prophecy. The spirit came upon them and they began to prophesy. They forgot the mission that they were there to kill David. They started prophesying, prophesying and doing all manner of things. And it was told to Saul what happened to his messengers. He sent a second bunch of messengers. They came and something, the same thing happened to them. He sent the third bunch and the same thing happened to them. And he, he, he realized that this is a problem. And himself, he came, he came. L look at it uh, in the... Following verses, sir. After 21, there. Uh -huh. And when it was told uh, Saul, he sent, uh -huh, uh, go further. Uh -huh. Then went he also to Rama. This is Saul. Eh? And uh, came uh, to a great well that is in Seku. And uh, he asked and said, where is Samuel and David? And uh, one said, behold, they be at Nioth in Ramah. And what happened? And, uh, when, uh, and he went there to Nioth in Ramah. And uh, the spirit of God was upon him. His case was even worse. And uh, he went on and prophesied until he came to Nioth in Ramah. And uh, father, he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel like, uh, in like manner and laid down naked all day and all night and all night. And everybody asked, has Saul also become a prophet? Because these episodes are happening not because there is relevance and there is need for them to prophesy, not because they are prophesying anything of relevance, but because the spirit of the Lord had taken over. They have followed David in the wrong place where he has his covering. And therefore, at this point, it was not like when he was in the palace when he was exposed. He was alone. And therefore, David was exposed to the javelin that was coming. He had to evade physically. It was not like this, uh, the second time uh, when uh, he was in bed and they wanted to pin him to the bed to kill him there. Now, at this instance, he is with his spiritual covering and the spiritual covering has taken charge. David is no longer in charge and he realized what is happening. The messengers are coming and they begin to prophesy. Another bunch comes and they begin to prophesy. Another bunch comes and they begin to prophesy. And did that provokes the boss to come himself and say, I'm going to find out what is happening. And when he goes there, he also begins to prophesy. Not only does he prophesy, he stripes himself naked. All day and night, laying there on the ground, a whole king. Don't forget. Saul is still the king here. He is naked. Stripping naked, crazy, and chanting all manner of things. Because the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And against him. Shielding David from him. So that David has his covering. And his covering is working. When he has the man of God near there, he realizes that everything works differently. Here I am no longer in charge. It is my covering who is in charge. Let me tell you something. It is important for you to have a spiritual covering. Ask your neighbor, do you have a spiritual covering? Sometimes I see people struggling with their troubles and problems and challenges without involving their spiritual covering. And let me tell you, your answer is just around you. I am not saying this because I am a pastor. No, I am not saying this because I am a preacher. It was said long time ago before even I was born or you and I were born. 
If you read the book of uh, 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 Second Chronicles chapter number 20, verse 20, the same thing that Jehoshaphat was telling uh, the Israelites when they were against uh, the Moabites. Uh, they had uh, risen against them and uh, Jehoshaphat is mobilizing and all that. And this is what he said. Uh, I'm interested in the latter part, but let me read uh, this whole verse. And uh, they arose early in the morning the Korah, and as they went forth, uh, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, uh, and uh, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Listen to two things that I've already mentioned. God was still with David. No wonder he was feared by Saul and he had a spiritual covering. This is what the Bible says. Believe in the Lord uh, your God so you shall be established. Believe in his prophets uh, so shall he prosper. Let me tell you something. If you do not have a spiritual covering, it does not matter whether you are above their level, whether your challenge is above their level, whether they are unschooled, whether you are schooled more than them, whether you have more money than them, whether whatever it is that you have, it doesn't matter. Tell your neighbor, you need spiritual covering. Because when you are with your spiritual covering, let me tell you, there are challenges that are not meant for the spiritual men and women of God. The spiritual authorities, there are challenges that are not meant for them. In fact, they solve problems that are bigger than themselves. Because Samuel was just a prophet and he's up against who? the king, the reigning king. And the king is coming and he can do nothing. No wonder David had realized that this works so well for me. That even if my enemies are against me, when I have my spiritual covering, everything is sorted and taken care of. I am safer. No wonder in Psalm chapter number 23 he said that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. They can watch but they can do nothing. Just imagine when Saul was there prophesying and his soldiers were there being crazy and striping naked and all that all day and all night David was seated somewhere relaxing sometimes he slept like a baby forgetting all the drama and everything that was happening because his spiritual covering and authority was in charge let me tell you there is power in spiritual authority and as is your spiritual authority I declare may your enemies be put to shame in the name of Jesus because many of us, our enemies are having pride every time. They are successful every time. But when you have your spiritual covering, let me tell you something. God is in charge and your enemies can be embarrassed. In your presence, in your presence, David was just there relaxing and enjoying himself. Say, ah, this is it, this is it, this is it. They were after me. They still have their weapons. They still have everything. They still are in power and in authority. For spiritual covering, with my spiritual authority, I have the confidence. And no wonder Jehoshaphat is telling them, believe in God and you'll be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. May you prosper against your enemies in the name of Jesus. I declare in your life that every effort of the enemy is going to fail in the name of Jesus. May they be put to shame in the name of Jesus. I declare every enemy of your family, may they be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Every enemy of your job, your business, your career, and everything that you do, even ministry, I declare they are going to be put to shame before you in the name of Jesus. May you die now before your enemies and they can do nothing. I say no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper when you have a spiritual covering in the name of Jesus. Remind your neighbor you need a spiritual covering. Ah, you need a spiritual covering. That's very important. You need a spiritual covering. I, I was discussing with someone and I was telling them that uh, sometimes uh, uh, we the men of, and women of God, the things that we are involved with uh, or in are bigger even than ourselves. We are invited to deal with situations that even ourselves we have never faced. But guess what? It is not about us. It is about the one that is in us and the one that has put us in charge. He is a powerful God. I declare he is a powerful God. May he manifest himself upon your life in the name of Jesus. That's why 
I, I tell people, I go and dedicate houses and open houses that I do not have. I dedicate cars that I, I don't have and I do not drive. I dedicate things and all those manner of things. And I go sometimes to do many things that are bigger than themselves. Some people are opening big businesses and I go there and I'm surprised I have not seen such. And I say, ah, this is the recognition of the spiritual covering. Let me tell you something today. As your spiritual covering, when you believe in your spiritual covering, you shall not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. It is the enemy that is going to be put to shame. This pushed David into his prayer of agony and mourning and lamenting in uh, Psalm chapter number 59 because he realized uh, that I'm going through a lot. A lot. Give me Psalm uh, chapter number 59 beginning from verse 1 uh, as we close with this. The Bible says, uh, I want us to read together. I want us to read together. It has only 17 verses and uh, we, read, we read together very fast in the name of Jesus. One to go. Deliver me. Are you reading or murmuring? Now I want to hear you deliver me. Oh my God, defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression. Nor for my sin, O oh Lord. They run. Awake. Uh -huh. Thou therefore, O oh Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Uh, Salah. They return at evening, they make and go what? Doing what? Sword? For they say, does, uh -huh. but thou shall, thou shall. Uh -huh. Because of will I for God, the God, God upon my enemies, slay them not, lest scatter them by thy power, and uh huh. For the sin and uh -huh, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may uh -huh, and And let them do what? Uh huh. Uh huh. Sixteen. For thou. Mm -hmm. Lastly. Now, three elements. Element number one was petition. Tell your neighbor petition. So when you are in you need to petition God, petition is just like pleading with God, telling God what is happening to you. You need to tell God. Number two, it had lament. It is okay to complain. Tell your neighbor it is okay to complain. 
<laughs> Sometimes uh, we are so harsh on ourselves uh, because uh, some troubles and challenges, and some of you have gone through challenges, and when I'm talking to you, maybe when we have met, you are asking me, everything is lament, does God remember me, does he care, why is it that I'm going through this and I've not done nothing, it is not my transgression, I have been doing so good things, I have been serving the Lord very faithfully, I'm a very faithful giver, I've been doing this and that, it is okay, tell your neighbor, it is okay to lament. Because sometimes you do not understand why. That's why sometimes uh, he was lamenting. He was lamenting. However, he was realizing that these people, they back around uh, in the city like, like, like dogs. Now, one of the interesting things about dogs is that uh, when a dog barks, if you do not know the strength or the ability of that dog, then you are afraid. Some of you, even where you live, Maybe there is a dog that barks every day and you pass without even noticing it's barking. Huh? A dog barks and it's just there. It's not like, uh, you know, held or uh, tied anywhere. It is just there. It is barking. But simply because you have been using that path many years and many times and this dog is harmless or toothless for that matter so that it can continue barking as you do your things uh, and as you walk by. But when you know the dogs are wild, and they are bad news, then you have every reason to be afraid. Every reason to be afraid. Let me tell you a story. I'm a man of stories. Eh? Uh, one day, um, we, 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 we had come from fellowship. Uh, I was a young man. I was a young man. So it, it so happened uh, we were at your place. Eh? And uh, that place they call Kwama Dogi. Eh? <laughs> that place, they started those doggies Kitambo. Eh? <laughs> it's not just yesterday. They started those dogs Kitambo. So we were coming from fellowship and you know there is a path. That time it wasn't that built. It wasn't that built. Ourselves who are living on this other end just before the bypass there. Now, um, it, it so happened when we were coming from the fellowship and we finished the fellowship so well and all that and said bye bye and we walked. And uh, we, we, there, there were some people from prisons and uh, Getodua and those areas. They took another path and I was left all alone with five girls. Five ladies using that path. Was I remembering that place has dogs? <laughs> but I know they were bad. <laughs> and, and therefore, approaching the place there, the fence was just, you know, a kind of a bushy fence. Eh? There was no perimeter wall. It was a bushy fence so that the dogs could find their way out. And they came packing and they were many and I wanted to run. <laughs> Everything in my body is telling me, run. <laughs> you are the fastest here. <laughs> but every, something else is telling me, you are going to embarrass yourself. <laughs> you are the man here. <laughs> the only? So the only reason that I stopped, it is because I was a man. <laughs> and have I, have I ever told you that there are some people who look very courageous, but deep down inside, the tears are flowing from inside. <laughs> they are standing very strong from outside, but inside they are shivering. Yeah? They are shaking everywhere. Let me tell you something, the dogs were coming and approaching, and the girls were telling me, what do we do, what do we do? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm there myself, I don't know what to do. There is something that is telling me to run, and another thing is telling me to stay. And I decided to stay. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Because I, 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 I just didn't know what to do. So I told them, stand still. <laughs> but the problem, they came and they were holding me. And no one wants to be the side where the dogs are coming from. All of them are holding me. Very tight and there and I don't know what to do. We stood there. <laughs> and when the dog saw like a group of people, <laughs> they saw hey, this person is very big. Eh? <laughs> because <laughs> we were looking as one. <laughs> I said, ah. the dogs went back and somehow the owner came and called them and all that. And we continued walking. <laughs> and they are thanking me. They are telling me, hey, thank God we had a man. <laughs> but which man? <laughs> Inside of me, telling me that hey, I'm not the man. I don't want to be a man in such a 
better situation. <laughs> you know, there are some times that you want to forfeit your manhood. Eh? You want, uh, no, 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 I'm not a man. Yeah. <laughs> in this instance, I don't want to be a man. But, but in any case, I, I had to do that. But let me tell you something. David is seeing his enemies that are going around the city backing like and suddenly they are scaring him. So besides petition and besides lamenting, he expressed his confidence that God is going to save him from that situation. Let me tell you something. You could be going through something and you have been telling yourself, this is so difficult for anyone to resolve. No government, no church, no parent, no whoever can resolve this. But may I tell you something? Have confidence that God is going to resolve it. And he is going to resolve it in the name of Jesus. Because he is a faithful God. He becomes our refuge to the ones that are destitute. The ones that are on the run. The ones that are homeless. The ones that are, you know, being pursued by everyone. May I tell you something? You do not have to play very strong before the enemy. You can run, yes. You can do all things, yes. But have the confidence that your God, your God is equal to the tax. Now remind your neighbor, tell God about it. Now, when you are experiencing trouble, all right? Tell, tell him again or her. Tell God about it. Tell them it is okay to complain. But believe in God. Save you. And tell them, invite your spiritual covering. Tell them, consult your spiritual covering. Even as you consult professionals. Just lift up your hands and tell him how far I I declare Jesus. that the Lord, your shield, your defender, your salvation shall come through for you in that situation in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody shout amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus.